financial impact of the political turmoil in Ukraine? Yeah, well, in addition to the EU sanctions that we've been talking about, Ukraine is now being hit with its second credit downgrade in less than a month. Standard & Poor's has cut Kiev's credit rating from triple C plus to just triple C. Uh, that's the sixth lowest junk rating, so almost as low as you can get. S&P already lowered it from the triple B range in late January as that political turmoil escalated. And the ratings agency has kept Kiev with a negative outlook, which means that they don't think things will stabilize anytime soon. All right, let's focus on this $19 billion deal that sent shockwaves across Silicon Valley. Yeah, people are still talking about it. Analysts are still asking if that $19 billion price tag isn't just a little bit too much for an app that is, after all, only four years old. So is it a strategic move or a stumble by Facebook? Delano D'Souza has been looking into it. An expensive bet to highlight a change in strategy. Facebook's $19 billion acquisition of WhatsApp shows just how important it views mobile messaging, a business that shaved off profits from telecom companies globally. It's a huge business with north of $100 billion a year, uh, eating into the telecoms and the other native applications on iOS and Android, for example. And so they're entering a space where they have very little presence. Many of WhatsApp's rivals in Asia have found ways to diversify their offerings. Line from Japan with 300 million users sells digital stickers to share with friends. China's WeChat has become the country's leading messaging app. Most of its revenues come from games. The company recently added a payment feature similar to PayPal. Israel-based Viber offers free internet phone calls to 280 million global users. Last week, the company was picked up by Japanese retail giant Rakuten for $900 million. Analysts believe Facebook was protecting itself when it decided to acquire WhatsApp. It's a defensive decision. Keep it away from Google. Keep it away from Apple and make sure that you don't keep losing teens and keep losing engagement, which is the existential threat for Facebook. How Facebook plans to recover its investment is not quite clear. For now, the company has direct access to WhatsApp's 450 million users. Let's take a look at the markets. Now, Asian markets mostly in positive territory there this Friday. The Shanghai, the only one erasing its weekly gains, closing down over a percent there. The Nikkei soaring ahead, closing up nearly 3% in Tokyo. This is the yen weakened even further, giving a boost to exporters. Markets have just opened here in Europe, that positive trend continuing here. London's FTSE 100 opening up 0.7%. And we'll be keeping a careful eye on Facebook's shares later on to see how they end the week on Wall Street following that shock WhatsApp purchase. Now, Kate, the global economy will take centre stage this weekend because G20 finance ministers are all gathering in Australia. What can it, we expect from this? It's going to be a message of very cautious optimism, I think. British finance minister uh, George Osborne is among those saying that volatility from any one country could possibly have an impact on the entire trend towards global growth. He's got his eyes on emerging markets as a possible risk. And the risks to the economic recovery have not gone away. Together, we need to act now to ensure that the emerging market problems don't contribute to a new crisis. And how do we do that? By each one of us putting our own houses in order and by using the G20 to make sure we all confront our problems instead of running away from them. All right, now let's move on to some other business news uh, with major changes afoot at the Royal Bank of Scotland. Yeah, according to the Financial Times, the RBS is going to start, is going to slash some 30,000 jobs in the next three to five years. It's part of a cost-cutting scheme as it aims to become a much smaller commercial and retail bank. RBS is 81% owned by the government and it currently employs about 120,000 staff. Hewlett Picard saw a surprise boost in its sales of personal com computers in the first quarter, up 4%, bucking a negative global trend. HP's net income for the three months ending in January rose 16%, but the outlook for the rest of the year is much weaker. And the British high street chemist Boots is to start selling e-cigarettes this Monday. It struck a deal to provide the Puritan brand made by Imperial Tobacco even though the product is not being regulated as a medicine. It could be a boost for the e-cigarette industry, which is currently estimated to be worth $3 billion worldwide. 
And finally, the uh, European Central Bank has revealed that it racked 1.4 billion euros in profit last year. What about the man who runs it? Well, Mario Draghi, who is the president of the ECB, earned 378,000 euros last year. That's about a 1% increase from a year earlier. But what's really been drawing attention is the fact that it's more than twice the salary of his American counterpart, the head of the U.S. Federal Reserve, Janet Yellen, is earning just under $200,000. Uh, that even though the Fed itself makes much more in profits, about $78 billion last year. And it's got a lot of people wondering if this is uh, a sort of a new manifestation of the glass ceiling or if it's just a transatlantic difference in living conditions. Uh, who knows? But it's pretty good to know how much those top bankers are putting into their pockets. Thank you very much, Kate. That was uh, all of uh, France Vencat's business news with our very own Kate Moody. And it's time now for the International Press Review with Nicholas Rushworth, who joins me now 